you're out there, you're riding, you're having a good time and uh, taking in the, the outdoors. The fight isn't over. The fight is just beginning. What's going on guys? This is Carl, the Racer Red Channel. Today I'm riding the Husqvarna TE 250. It's got a rebuild. I just replaced the air filter, replaced the piston and rings, and I replaced all the rubber pieces. My exhaust was leaking too, so I replaced the uh, rubber O-rings on the exhaust. Yeah, it should be running good now. It has a new spark plug. So today I'm riding Emmett, Idaho, and I'm uh, just going up this trail that I had gone up with Johnny Murphy on the Beta 500 RRS. And so I wanted to give you guys kind of an outside perspective on this trail. I'm doing a little bit of testing on the Husqvarna TE250 because I just did the rebuild on it. And um, so far it's been working really good. The bottom end is awesome on this thing, but um, through the rev range it's kind of acting funny. It's kind of acting like uh, the exhaust needs to be repacked or something. Um, it's giving me a weird exhaust note, so um, definitely still got to work out some slight bugs, but I did notice that it stopped smoking um, the more I rode it. I think the, the rings probably just needed to seat. So um, the more I ride it, I have a feeling the better it's going to get. So even in the outside perspective on a lot of these trails, it's kind of hard to see exactly how steep they are. Um, a lot of this stuff is, uh, is extremely steep, especially considering the traction that you're getting out here. It's very limited, especially right now um, until we get moisture in the soil and get some, uh, some storms rolling through. I'm taking this bike out and putting some miles on it. The front tire on this Husky is probably the worst thing about the bike right now. I really need to get that switched out. The tire is, uh, it's not the size I normally run. It's not as wide. And um, it's a Shinko fat tire, but it's a 90-90. Uh, 21 and I normally run a 9121 and so the tire that I run normally is much wider and <clears throat> this design tire is uh, is made to be wide it's made to be a wide platform tire and also the the bib that I have in this tire is way too small for it so it's flopping around and some of these shots you can really see it just kind of folding over and flopping around so I'm pretty much riding the bike with a flat front tire during this video. I'll definitely get that switched out here pretty quick. So riding up through these canyons I had noticed these little trails before but I kind of didn't think anything of them. A lot of these trails are really similar to game trails and cow trails. In fact when I was in Cambridge last week I noticed that there are a lot of game trails that look exactly like the motorcycle trails. So it's really hard to decipher uh, which is which and which way to go. So um, here in Emmett you do have a lot of game trails but uh, luckily here in this little cycle park this was donated by a private individual and so it's open use area which means you can ride wherever you want and you can create a trail wherever you want which provides a lot of freedom for people who just want to go out and ride. This uh, front tire is floppy. I 
definitely makes things more difficult. So I'm giving you guys an outside perspective of this trail I did <laughs> the other day. I did it on my Beta 500. This area is just so heavily used. Um, people are going to need to spread out a little bit more. And I think that will really uh, disperse a lot of the impact over this area because Little Jim Cycle Park just isn't a very big area. So if you have a small area and a lot of people, it, it receives a lot of use and gets pretty torn up. So um, the more you can get people out there um, riding all over the place, the better. And it'll hold way more people. Crossroaded. So some of the sketchiest stuff is right next to these ledges. It's really hard to like stay on these trails. These trails are really, like I said, they were made by motorcyclists, so it's really only uh, tire width. Cool terrain, so you got to stay in that trail, in that groove. Otherwise, if you do fall off the side, you'll end up stuck. Okay, where am I going? Most of this ride, I'm just kind of looking around. I've only ridden this trail one time, so uh, there's a couple times when I lose the trail and I'm back out looking for it. It's actually pretty hard to spot if you don't know the area very well. But this is a really, really good winter riding area. This is one of the places I go to. Up on the ridges, it actually gets really gnarly in the winter time. It's pretty much no good um, during the winter up on the ridges. If, if it has received much moisture at all, the ridges get pretty muddy pretty quick and uh, things get frozen up there. But if you stay down in the valleys, uh, the, the sand really soaks up a lot of the moisture and you can still ride pretty much year round down there. And uh, a lot of these riding areas are the riding areas where I will be going to um, in November, December because uh, I do expect that we will be receiving snow and, and rainfall and stuff like that. So I think that Hemingway Butte is going to be one of my main spots. And then, uh, of course, Little Jim. Anywhere where there's a good low elevation um, sand area, it's, it's usually pretty good. It's hard to really show the level of traction um, through a video because these mountains aren't giving you hardly any traction this time of year. There's I mean, as you can there see, the dust coming up, that's, uh, there's no moisture in that dirt, so it's really, really slick. Here, you can see I'm trying not to put my foot down too much on the side of the hill. I'm trying to weight the, uh, the downhill foot peg as much as possible. That shoves the rear tire and the, uh, just both tires into the mountain as much as possible. And it really helps traction out. I think a lot of people tend to try to use that foot as much as possible because they feel planted um, away from the bike and so they feel like they're walking area. on the mountain. And uh, that's really not the way to go because the bike will just start sliding if you do that. Good God, this front tire sucks. It's the unfortunate thing about this tire is not only is it flat, but it'll fold over. So. As you guys could see going down that, it folds over under pressure and it's not good. Here you can see the whole bike sliding sideways. This is really steep side hill terrain. And so it's really important to try not to put too much weight on that support foot. Um, you really want to put all your weight on the foot peg and not on the mountain. But really today was a, a beautiful day to ride. We had a storm coming in, so it ended up really pouring after I got done riding here. But it should be good for this soil. So the next time I ride this area, it should be way better traction. But uh, here... In a couple weeks to a month, it'll probably be snowed over for the most part. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. I will catch you on the next one.
Peace. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.